Professor Tarot. In this video, I'm going to define for you what an inscribed angle is in a circle and relate the measure of this inscribed angle to the measure of the arc. I'm going to work through a few examples and then I'm going to um, use those examples to kind of lead us into some corollaries dealing with inscribed angles and how they relate to each other in the circle and such. We're also going to be looking at how tangent lines can also help to um, uh, create some inscribed angles and work through two more examples dealing with those. So there'll be five examples total in this video along with a lot of definitions and corollaries to help you, of course, do your homework. So we have a circle here. The measure of an inscribed angle is half of the measure of the intercepted arc. Well, that's fine as far as the measurements go, but what exactly is an inscribed angle? Well, an inscribed angle is simply made up of two chords in a circle and the vertex of that angle must be on the circle itself. Now there's two types of angles that we deal with in with circles quite often. Those are central angles. If you have a central angle where the vertex is the center of the circle, then the measure of that central angle is equal to the arc. But in an inscribed angle, the measure of that angle is equal to half of the arc. Okay, so uh, our first example here is we have a couple of inscribed angles. We have angle B, F, C, and we have angle uh, A, D, C. Both of those angles have their vertex on the circle, so they're inscribed. Okay, so the first thing I'm saying here is what is the measure of arc A, C? Well, arc A, C here, remember when you name a uh, minor arc, you want to use two letters, major arcs, which means more than halfway around the circle, three letters. So two letters, we're talking about a minor arc. So we're talking about arc A and around the circle to C. Well, we have an inscribed angle here and angle A, D, C here, C, starting and ending basically with uh, points A and C, that inscribed angle is equal to 80 degrees. So the um, arc, the measure of that arc is going to be twice that inscribed angle. So two times 80 is going to be 160 degrees. Okay, so now we got the measure of arc BC. Well, we had the segment addition postulate, and then we also had that um, postulate about the measurement or the uh, combining the measurements of arcs. Now, if arc AC is 160 degrees, and let's see here, arc AC, um, well, BC is a large portion of that arc AC. So if I take the measure of arc AC, which is equal to 160 degrees, and then we can subtract, see if I just take out that little bit from here to here in degrees is again 160, and if I just back out that 15 degrees, then I'm going to have the measure of arc BC. So it's going to be 160 degrees minus 15 degrees, and that's going to be equal to 160, 150, 145. Okay, excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and add in that 145 here. So I, I find it a good idea to measure my, or uh, not measure, but uh, put my numbers back into my diagram as I work through these problems. Often it helps to solve um, additional parts of it. And exactly what's, what's going on here, I want to find the measure of angle F. Well, measure of angle F, it's, in, it's vertex on the circle inscribed. That inscribed angle is half of the measure of the arc. So we're going to take 145 degrees, divide that by 2, and that is going to be equal to, let's see here, 7 times 2 is 14, so that's going to be 7. Uh, there's two twos and fives, uh, and a 5, so 2. And 5 divided by 2 is 4, remainder of 1. 1 over 2 means we're going to have a uh, measure of 72.5 degrees. Okay, and don't forget, you can, you can measure arcs in terms of the number of degrees that includes around the circle, and of course there's arc length. I'm obviously dealing with degrees. Okay, let me just scan this down here, make sure I've got the right answers. Okay, on my second diagram here, I want to find the diameter of this circle. And this is the diameter of the circle. So, if this is the diameter of the circle, AC, and a diameter basically cuts a circle in half, then how much is the measure of arc AC. Well, the measure of arc AC is going to be 180 degrees, half a circle. And now I'm looking for the length of the diameter, but um, 
To do that, I have to kind of work with this inscribed angle. And it kind of looks like, see how well I drew this. If I put my piece of paper up here in the diagram, it kind of looks like that that's a right angle. And, well, you can't trust a diagram. Just because I drew it to look like a 90 degree angle doesn't mean it necessarily is. So I need to like use the information given in the diagram to actually sometimes prove what looks like is the actual case. Because uh, sometimes we draw diagrams to kind of trick you, right? And make things look like right angles when they're really not and such. So if this is 180 degrees and <clears throat> this is an inscribed angle with that angle or with that vertex on the circle, the measure of that inscribed angle is going to be half of the measure of the arc. So it's kind of important we realize that's a diag uh, diameter, that that's 180 degrees, and half of 180 is equal to 90. So the measure of angle B is equal to 180 minus 2, which is the 90 that I just said. And now I validated that this doesn't just look like a right triangle, it actually is. Uh, we'll be mentioning this relationship between the uh, semicircle and the inscribed angle when we get to the corollaries here in just a second. Kind of summarize what I put in said in words. So we have a right triangle, and anytime we're looking for the missing side of a right triangle, well, if you know two sides of a right triangle and you're just looking for one, you're going to find that with Pythagorean theorem. If you only have one side of that right triangle and you know the measure of one of these acute angles, then you're going to be using your Sokatoa, uh, sines op, uh, sine of an angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent to find information, uh, the missing information of that triangle. Just doing some verbal review. We have two sides, we're missing one. We're going to do Pythagorean theorem. So Pythagorean theorem is going to be a squared plus b squared, the two sides that are helping to make that uh, right angle. So 7 squared plus 11 squared is equal to x squared. 7 squared, 7 times 7 is 49. 11 squared is 121. That's equal to x squared. We're going to combine those like terms. So 121 plus 40 is 161. And 161 plus 9 is 170. We're going to square root both sides of this equation to finish solving for x, the length of the diameter, and the square root of 170. I don't think there's any perfect squares in that, so it's not reducible, but it does come out to be a decimal of 13.04 centimeters. Bam! Got that one done. Uh, let's get to the next screen. We're going to do one example and start introducing some corollaries related to these uh, idea of this in, uh, <laughs> inscribed angle. Now my last example and this example are going to go together to actually help explain um, <laughs> my movie's done processing that I just got done making. Uh, those two examples are going to help explain two of the three corollaries I'm going to write up here on the next screen to kind of summarize uh, some of the properties of these, of these inscribed angles uh, that I'm doing with these examples. What is the relationship between angles A and B? So I've got two inscribed angles in the circle and they happen to be sharing uh, sort of like common endpoints to these uh, inscribed angles. In other words, we're looking at really just a quadrilateral where we have opposite angles which are inscribed and I can do the same thing with angles C and D but I'm just going to do a and B, how are they related to each other? Well, they must be related to each other somehow, otherwise I wouldn't be asking you this question. So, let's find that out. Do I know what the measure of angle A is? Uh, no, I don't. And do I know what the measure of angle B is? I don't know that either. So, let's start with something that we do know, or just start with some kind of information. And that is going to be that, um, let's pick this minor arc here. The measure of this minor arc is equal to what? Well, I don't know. Uh, I just told you I don't know what the measure of these angles are, so how could you know, I say, well, what, all of a sudden, just measure of CD. So I don't know what it is. So we're just going to say that the measure of arc CD is equal to X. Now that means that the measure of, um, how do I want to lay this out here? Let's put it here. The measure of angle B, now B, the inscribed angle B, 
or CBD is what is creating sort of this, div this division of this arc um, CD. So the measure of angle D is going to be half of the measure of that arc. So the measure of angle B is equal to X over 2. Okay, now let's keep in mind that we've just identified this portion of the circle that's being created or that arc that's being created by the inscribed angle B and kind of flip to the other side and look at this portion of the circle. The measure of arc C, B, D. Now look, I'm using three letters because I'm wrapping more than halfway around the circle. Well, this is basically just sort of like the other part of the circle, right? Here's arc C, D. Now I want to talk about the other side, arc C, D, B. So it's just the other part of the circle. Well, the full rotation is 360 degrees, right? So if the measure of arc CD we define as being the value of X, then the measure of arc CBD is the other side of the circle. Well, the two parts have to add up to 360 degrees, so it's 360 minus X. That means that the measure of angle A, remember the question is how are angles A and B related to each other? I don't really care so much about the arcs, even though I'm having to use this idea that they're just the two arcs arc CD and arc CBD, you know, the, they have to add up to 360 degrees. So if this is, uh, excuse me, if this is 360 minus X, uh, then the inscribed angle, angle CAD, or just angle A, that, the measure of that angle has to be half of this arc. So the measure of angle A uh, is equal to 360 minus, whoops, 360 minus X, over 2. Okay, now what's supposed to, you know, what's about that? Okay, let's, let's, find out let's find out what happens when we add them. The measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B, um, <clears throat> something cool is going to happen when we add those. Well, the measure of angle B, don't really know what it is, or A, excuse me, I wrote A first. The measure of angle A is 360 minus x over 2 plus the measure of angle B, which is x over 2. Oh, something weird is going to happen, right? When we add or subtract fractions, we need common denominators, and I already have that. I have a common denominator, common denominator excuse me, of 2. So I should just be able to combine the numerators, and I'm going to be done. Well, 360 minus x plus x minus x plus x. The negative x and the positive x, so those are opposite. They're just going to cancel out. So we end up with 360 over 2, and 360 divided by 2 is equal to 180 degrees. What I've basically just done here is proven, I don't know if it's going to be the second or third corollary, the third corollary I'm going to put up on the next screen of when you have inscribed angles, when you have a quadrilateral um, inscribed in a circle, the opposite angles are always going to be supplementary. Very, very cool. Let's get those correlators up there so you can write them out. So, two inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are going to be congruent. So, angle A and angle B, if they intercept the same arc, and let's just say that maybe that's, I don't know, 100 degrees, then both of those angles would have to be 50, thus they will be congruent to themselves. An angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. That's what I discussed in one of my just previous examples. So if this is a diameter or if we have 180 degrees, which is a semicircle, then that angle, that inscribed angle, is going to be half of the inscribed arc. Thus, it'll be a right angle, and you'll probably be doing Pythagorean theorem in there somewhere for those kind of questions. And finally, the opposite angles of a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle are supplementary, and I just snuck a proof in that. Uh, in this video for you for that particular third uh, corollary. Okay, here's an exa uh, not another example, but excuse me, our last uh, theorem before we finish our last two examples. Tangent lines and inscribed angles. Remember, a tangent line is a line that touches a circle at only one point, even though there's a bit of an overlap there. And a chord is also in this definition. A chord is a line segment whose endpoints are on the circle. So. The measure of an angle, right there, formed by a tangent line, and a chord is half the measure of the intercepted arc. So kind of really this is, you know, we have an angle whose vertex is on the circle. So really, 
uh, this is sort of a specialized version of an inscribed angle. So let's just say for argument's sake that the measure of this arc is equal to, um, let's say 160 degrees. Then the measure of this uh, angle that is formed by the chord and a tangent line, but the key point thing is, or the key fact here is the vertex is on the circle, so it's a specialized version of an inscribed angle, that is going to be equal to also 80 degrees. And since our corollary one here says that, you know, two inscribed angles that intercept at the same arc are congruent means that uh, I could draw this inscribed angle and I could draw this inscribed angle or I could even draw this inscribed angle and every single one of those angles are going to be congruent every single one of those angles uh, intercepting the same arc which is 160 degrees each of those inscribed angles is going to be 80 degree, uh, degrees all right let's get to those last two examples Woo! thank you for watching I said we had five examples but there's like five problems just in this one I want to find all the missing values in this diagram now I've got them numbered here I've got I want to find this the measure of this angle uh, this angle, this arc, this arc, and finally that angle. I didn't number these in the order that I would necessarily be able to find them in. So, you may want to just pause the video and see if you can't figure out these missing parts on your own. Okay. So, <clears throat> what piece of information can we find first? And maybe you can think of something different. But um, I'm looking at this arc AC and the fact that it's equal to 100 degrees. And I've got a tangent line. I've got a chord and its vertex of this angle here, angle ACE, has its vertex on the circle, which basically means it's an inscribed angle. It's got a you know, tangent line, special case, but it's still inscribed. So the measure of angle 5 is going to be equal to half of 100 degrees. So the measure of angle 5 is equal to 100 divided by 2, which is going to be equal to 50 degrees. Now I'm going to come through here and erase these um, numbers as I work this out so I can use them through the rest of the diagram. What am I going to find out? Well, this is a tangent line. I've got two angles which are adjacent forming a straight line. That's called a linear pair, and a linear pair are supplementary. So the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle uh, 5, I guess it wasn't a good idea to erase that name, but these two angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So the measure of angle 2 is equal to the 180 that we need when these are added together. Uh, but I've already got 50 taken accounted for, so 180 minus 50. And so the measure of angle 2 is 130 degrees. So let's take this out and put in 130. Hmm. Let's see here. Now I know that this is 130 degrees and I have a tangent line and a chord so I do actually know that the measure of arc ABC that this entire arc is going to be twice that inscribed angle but I don't know you know it's in two separate pieces so I don't really know how much arc AB and arc BC is going to be equal to proportionally but they're going to add up to 260. Uh, what else can we see in here? Well we have a triangle right and the inside angles of a triangle, the interior sum of those angles of a triangle have to add up to 100. I've tried to highlight that so you can see it better, but the orange kind of looks like white. The interior angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So that means that I've got 12 and 130 accounted for, so I can find the measure of angle 1, because those three, ang uh, three angles, like I just said, have to add to 180. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to... Um, 180, and I'm going to just back subtract here, 180 minus uh, the 130, 
minus the 12 degrees. So 180 minus 30 is, uh, 130 is 50, and now we're at 40, and now we're at 38 degrees. Excellent. So now I can take this out and put in 38 degrees. Now, if that inscribed angle is equal to 38 degrees, then I know how much the opposite arc is, or the arc is that is created by that inscribed angle. So arc, the measure of arc BC, or our unknown value of 3, the measure of arc BC is going to be twice our inscribed angle. So 2 times 38 is going to be, well, 2 times 30 is 60, 2 times 8 is 16, and 60 and 16 is equal to 76 degrees. Finally, let's take this out and put in our 76 degrees. Yep, okay. So now what is left? The measure of arc AB. And as I look around the circle, this circle, which is 360 degrees, we're not talking about arc length, but measuring our arcs in degrees, we've got one, two, three arcs that this circle is um, broken up into. And the measure of these three arcs needs to add up to 360 degrees because that is a full rotation in a circle. So the measure of arc AB is going to be 360 minus 100 minus 76. And that is going to be 360, 260. 260 minus 70 is 190. And 190 minus 6 is 184. Okay, before I let, check out here, let's just make sure that I've got these right. Um, AB is 184. Yes, BC was equal to 76. Measure of angle 1 was 38, 130, and 50. All right. Uh, thank you for sticking around. Got one more example, and it's going to be a multi-part one like this one. So hopefully it'll help you get rid of or solve some of your harder questions in your homework. All righty then. <laughs> We got our last uh, diagram here, lots of missing values, and we want to find all of them. Okay, now, again, you don't necessarily have to find the same piece of information that I do first, but, uh, well, let's start with angle one. Now, this angle, we can, I'm going to just say, you know, the center of the circle is the vertex of this angle, so this is a central angle. So. The measure of angle C is going to be the same as the measure of the arc that it intersects, or intercepts. So, um, <clears throat> let's see here. Since arc, the measure of arc AB is 50, then the measure of angle uh, C, or the measure of angle 1, is going to be equal to the same thing, uh, 50 degrees. Now, <clears throat> The measure of angle 2, now see this angle has its vertex on the center of the circle. And I have it just sort of off to the side. Um, doesn't really matter, like you might notice this isn't perfectly balanced, and it doesn't need to be. As long as my vertex is on the circle, then the measure of that inscribed angle is going to be half of the arc. So the measure of angle 2, uh, or the measure of angle B, D, A, is going to be equal to 25 degrees. The measure of angle... 2 is equal to 50 divided by 2, which is 25 degrees. So let's take this out and put in, let's see here, 50, and take this out and replace it with our 25 degrees. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to leave the name in there. I'm just trying to make sure I keep this diagram as readable as possible. Let's see here, what's left? I need to find this unknown arc uh, measure AD, the, mark, uh, the measure of arc AD, or the value of 3 and 4. So, these kind of look like they're possibly equal, but looking like they're equal is not being equal, so I'm not going to assume that. What I am going to do is say, well, I have a tangent line touching the circle at one point, and a chord, that special type of inscribed angle, again with its uh, vertex on the circle, is the measure of that angle is going to be half of the arc, the measure of the arc. So the value of 3, or the measure of arc AD, is going to be 2 times 60, which is 120 degrees. 
And again, this particular circle, like the last, this entire circle is broken up with the measure of one, two, three different arcs, and they have to add up to 100 and, uh, excuse me, 360 degrees. And that means I'm almost done, because I want to find the measure of arc BD. So the measure of arc BD is equal to 360, not 630, 360 minus 50 minus 120, so we've got 360, 260, 240, minus 50 is equal to 190 degrees. And that is the end of my last example. So, I'm Mr. Chiru, back! Go to your homework.